Hello everyone, this is Sergio from Game Day Showcare Academy. I'm glad to have this space to talk a little bit with you. And the topic today is the game day. So what are we gonna do when we play the games? Our academy is part of the Premier Academy League and normally we go to the games and we have a game plan and we're expecting the kids to go and do as a coach what we tell them. So sometimes we go, Johnny, uh, go as a centre back, don't leave your position, cover the middle, um, let's play wide, open the field. A lot of instructions from the coaches, that's natural, that's how we are, alright? But then little Johnny is an 8 years old kid that really don't get it. He might don't even know what a center back is. And it's stuff like that, we, we, t we kind of take it by granted that the kids know all this stuff and maybe they don't know it. So this is space now and the couple of videos you're gonna see are gonna be focused on explaining your little kid to understand what, do, what we're doing, all right? And what's our game plan. What I'm really worried is to give you guys and give our players as much value as we can and the best way i've learned the kids learn is by watching so we're gonna start very basic and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna behave and what's our game plan for the weekend especially in a seven versus seven all right so let's go okay the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the formation we use i like to play two three one in this case, I think it's very clear that number three and number four are the defenders and they got big responsibilities at the back. And then you got a line of three, which is number eight, number 11 and number seven, that they got uh, meal filter responsibilities that you can tell them is an up and down job. And of course you have an striker that is gonna be more in, high in the pitch as an attacker, okay? Now, we're gonna start position by position and the first one we're gonna analyze is the center backs, okay? So to start with the center backs, I want to do a kind of an exercise here where we divide the pitch into three, in three channels. And the most important channel that we want to protect, this is not only for the center back, that's for the whole team. The channel that we want to protect is the middle channel. Let's gonna call it channel number two, okay? And why? The reason is because the goal is in that channel, very simple. Okay, now that we know that, I want to ask these two guys, and that's the first simple task four and three if the ball is in the white area let's say they got it on the white area here let's put number 11 on the white area they got the ball there should number four leave the middle channel to go yes 100 percent. and now this is the rule number one that i want your kid to understand is always minimum one of the two center backs being in the center channel that's it so what about if the ball goes to the other side? So let's say, sorry, let's say the ball goes to the other side. So now number three goes and number four will cover the middle channel. That's it, whatever the ball is. If the ball comes back in the middle, nice and compact in the middle. If the ball goes to the side, one of you push, the other one is stay in the middle. That's the task number one. Task number two, and this is very common and it's a very easy way to beat defenders and is when they both in a straight line. When both center backs are in a straight line, it becomes much easier for the opposition to play a ball through and get in behind. So we don't want that. Now the second kind of rule or the second thing I want you to learn as a center back in this formation is that if the ball is coming, let's say in the middle, one of you is gonna apply pressure, the other one is gonna cover you back. Very simple, so you're never in that. And what happens if the, the player on the ball comes on this side? Closest player is gonna mark and then the other one is gonna cover the back. 
have a look where we are again. Yes, it's exactly the same that we did before. We're not in a straight line. Now we're coming in a yeah, diagonal covering the back and look where we are. We're still on the middle channel. That's the channel we want to cover. Now, the third very important point, if you're playing as a center back in this situation, in this formation, is if the opposition team is playing with two strikers and you, you don't know what to do, first thing you can do is go and play 1v1 with the strikers. Stick with them. But you're going to say, what, what happened with this number 10 that is in possession? He's just going to dribble and go. All right? It's about timing. And this is the hardest. You can just delay the game, but just marking, marking and let them come, waiting for one of those guys to give you a hand. But if that doesn't happen, you need to pick your moment to go. And I think you need to let him come a little bit more rather than push, el the push earlier. If as a center back, you leave your position and go on the in the wrong time, what you're doing is opening a space to play that ball. Yeah, and then what's going to happen? Yeah, you might be able to get in here. But if that situation occurs and they play quick, it will be hard for you to get recover in this position. It might be a 1v1 against the goalkeeper. So what I will say is a stay a little bit more compact in the middle, covering the middle channel and forcing this number 10 to play a wide ball. So what we're doing in that point is forcing to play the ball out of the channel. If he plays the ball here, it's still more difficult than if we open the space in the middle and he goes straight here. So can we protect, the, sorry, can we protect the middle of the park here, being compact, and then from this situation, is where you actually can go and push when you got it. Because the only option you got is the white ball. And of course, it's a dangerous situation. Of course, it's hard. But again, you may be rely on them to come back or you may be go, number three will be able to cover or the angle will be much, much harder for this 11 to score. For whatever point you see, it's a 3v2 situation. So it's going to be harder. But this might help you, and especially in young age, to force them to play wide. And when the ball goes wide, it's not as dangerous. Even if it's dangerous, it's not as dangerous as if the ball goes through the middle. Okay, now let's just start it again, the third point, and that's it. Okay, now as a third point, we got three players attacking through the middle against our two center backs, okay? Now, what can we do? If the center backs goes and mark 1v1, you open the space in the middle for number 10. Even if it looks a little bit crazy for you, I would rather don't pick anyone and just cover the middle, the middle channel again. Why? Why are we asking you to do that? If our center backs are covering the middle, then he's not going to have that option to come through. But they're going to have the option to play wide. And that's at the end of the day what we want. We want them to play the wide ball so it's harder for them to score. My recommendation in this point for the center backs is to stay in the middle, compact and ready to go. Maybe one a little bit in front of the other one. Let the 10 carry the ball. At one point, this guy is going to push wide. This guy is going to push wide. So can you force, as a fullback, can you force them to play the size that you want? How do you do that? By big covering the channel. Not the player, the channel. And marking like that and then number four cover in the middle the best thing to do is trying to cover the pass it's a 50 50 in between marking the play in case they play the ball and as well covering this through ball and then forcing the player to go to one side in early ages this is difficult to do 
I'm a center back myself and I always thinking of this, but in early ages is hard to do. But if you're an under 12 or an under 14 player, you should be able to start understanding this position and stuff. And now, let's gonna do a summary of what we're talking. So point number one, if the ball goes white, yes, commit in the white areas, but then we want minimum one of the center backs where in channel number two which is the middle channel point number two for the center backs is don't stay in a straight line don't stay in a straight line like this okay all right not like that but maybe like this yes that looks better don't stay in a straight line make sure one of you is in front so you can actually cover your teammates back. So staying in this position, and especially in early ages where the referees won't give offsides and all that, can you be in this situation? So closest player, closest player, can you go and mark, and then number three covering the ball in the middle? Yes, in a straight, not in a straight line, but behind. And the number three is, can we block, cover the middle channel again and push the opposition to go wide? Push the opposition to go the side that you want. How would you do that? By trying to game ball. Number four, for example, in this case, is game ball in between there and covering the through ball. And then number three is covering the middle but at the same time, ready if they play that ball. Okay, guys, thank you very much. That was the center back position to start with. So we have a formation, which is a, th a two, three, one. I'm gonna explain you before we finish a little bit of why we don't play a three, three. Because it requires a lot of discipline and some of the stuff that I think in early ages is hard. And it got some disadvantage comparing this formation from my point of view. So, for example, if we go in a 3v3 and this is why we don't go, like we don't play like that. If we play in a 3v3 and we go and attack, normally these three players, they think we are attackers, all right? But then they, the number three, so the full backs are tend to go as well. Normally that happens. And what finishing up is you ended up having only one defender. The other reason is that we ended up having two straight lines of three people. And then if they play players in behind, if the opposition is able to penetrate, which normally happens because those guys go very wide, number nine go and press and they can maybe play someone here or even number two can find this place in the middle. What normally happens is you have a straight line of three, you have a straight line of three people and with a single pass, they ended up in our, in our uh, attacking our defensive line in one single pass. And then we got three players out of the play. And basically, and from my point of view, is not very helpful for kids to play 3v3, sorry, 3-1-3-3, three, 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 but I've seen a lot. And it might have some other advantage in attack because you got more people, you overlap, but in my point of view, defensive structure in early ages is so important. Okay, guys, that was it for today. Hope you enjoy, hope you like it, hope you learn. And if you got any question, put it in the comments, hit me a message, let me know. Uh, and if this is helpful, please share it. All right, thank you very much. See you in the next video. Yes, guys, thanks for watching. That was the end of the video. And if you enjoy it, please let me know, like it, share it, and subscribe in our YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.